I wouldn't call it revenge. Just, uh, just make making the most of the opportunity that was in front of us. Uh, we felt like we were right there last year, and uh, you learn through, you know, your your, your down times or disappointing times. You know, I, I feel like that's a that's a part of the growth, and I feel like we've grown from that. Uh, as you can see, the way we took care of the ball in the fourth quarter, and we didn't panic when they made their runs, um, I think that was growth. You know, Steph only threw one left-hand pass tonight. That was growth, and I told him that, um, you know, he's amazing. Uh, you know, this is history, you know, we're going down as one of the best teams ever, uh, and that's a special thing you cannot take away from us. Tim up front, Tim Kawakami, Mercury News, Andre. I don't know if I would have picked you as being the guy who's going to jump up on the scorer's table and scream at the crowd. What, what, what got into you? What were you saying? What was that about? I've been so stressed the last like three, four weeks, and I told my wife right after the game, like I'm so sorry. Like it's just been so stressful. Like Steve Kerr, is, he said it a few times during the game. He's like, you know, how does it feel to be the only adult on the court? <laughs> and it's stressful. Um, because it's a it's a it's a hard job that goes unnoticed, and you have to embrace it. You know, it's really just sacrificing to make sure everybody else is is eating. And um, but then you want to look for yourself sometimes. Like you know, you want to show people what you can do. And it just so happens that it's um it's always been perfect timing. You know, I think I think that's more of a blessing than anything else. It's like when it's time for me to be a little bit more selfish and show what I can do, like nights like this, or you know, the whole finals in 2015, it just shows that there's a there's something powerful up there that uh, I believe in that's that's working through me. Okay, front. Yeah, Carl Stewart, very new news group. It seemed like that dunk that you had in the second quarter just loosened everybody in the entire building. I mean, I, were you think? What did you see there? What were you looking to do in the second quarter and? Yeah. You well, I've been, about, I've been, um, I've been seeing that the whole series. Like, okay, it's there. Okay, I see it. It's there. Darren Williams pressuring me, sending me left. Okay, the drive is there. The drive is there. But I just haven't taken it, and they've been playing me for the pass. But I'm just like, you know, we're up 3-0. You know, don't try to force it. Just be patient. Be patient. When it's when it's the time to do it, you'll you'll know. And you've seen through the first couple games uh, when KD's out on the break and he's right down the middle. You saw a lot in game one and we had two shooters on the wing. It's kind of like pick your poison. And they're playing me to pass and it was like exploit them tonight. You know, I, Steve and I had an interesting conversation this morning and shoot around. And uh, he said, how many minutes you got? I said, whatever you need, I'll be ready. And I kind of just had a good feeling that inkling like tonight's the night to attack and, and, and get it over with. Monty on the right. Money Pool, NBC Sports Bay Area. Andre, you've been through this before. You've been here before a couple of years ago. But for the guys who had guys like David and, and Zaza and JaVale, uh, what was it like seeing them enjoy this moment? Yeah, that's a lot of fun. That's, it's actually funny because um, you felt it before. You know the feeling, but they have no clue. And they asked about us like, man, I don't know. I can't describe it. And they're like, what you mean? And it's like, well, you'll see. Just focus in and you'll figure it out. And then once it's like they hit zero and you see that excitement in their faces, it's almost like in a lost world because you have no idea what to do. Like, how do we supposed like, this is really happening. And this, you can't describe it, um, but really happy for those guys, especially for David West because this guy's so locked in. He's so locked in and he wants it so bad and he does everything he needs to do to be mentally focused, to have his body right. And that's when you see how precious these moments are because you got guys, you got a lot of guys like that that never even get to the finals, you know, never even get to the conference finals. And, you know, you're you always happy for the guys to sacrifice everything around their life just so they can put everything into this game. David also talked about how much work went into this. And he said, example being this morning when you guys had an early morning shoot and he said it was optional, but guys showed up. Uh, what does that tell you? And is that typical? Well, it's typical with our team. I think we, we've done a uh, Bob Myers, I can't believe I'm giving him a compliment considering we're about to go heads up and negotiating. <laughs> but um, he's done an awesome job of finding the right personalities to fit the culture and balancing it out. And uh, we have a lot of competitors, and 
you bring a new guy in, he's just going he's just going to fit right in. It's like uh, if it's optional, that means we got practice. The optional just means just get there when you get there. And we don't even have to speak about it. It's just you just know it. And that's the culture that we build and it's an, it's an amazing thing to see. Eric, last question. Andre, right here. Uh, Eric Pincus, Basketball Insiders, Bleacher Report. Can you put it into words? What's good, Gene? <laughs> <laughs> Can you put it into words what specifically a coach like Steve Kerr brings to this? You have so, so much talent, but what does he bring? And then also a second part of that is what did Mike Brown bring in his absence? Well, Steve is just, um, he's got a, a great brain, you know, where it's always working he's trying to figure everything out like okay i know what i got i know how to get the best out of each one of these guys but we're going to take it to the next level he's always trying to take it to the next layer the next layer the next layer is like an onion keep peeling it back keep peeling it back and it's so intricate and it's like he has this blade of a knife that's just so fine when he cuts it and it's like we're going to keep peeling it we're going and he's trying to sometimes he's, he's so into it I think he forgets that it's like you went too far with certain guys. But he does a great job of knowing how to communicate with the, each individual, which is key, because everybody's different. And he does such a good job communicating with them for the whole. And he does a good job of tricking some guys, too, uh, as far as you know their focus of, of what he wants to. He's, he's really good at trying to figure out what to say to them to get them to do what we need to do on the court. And, um, Mike Brown. Mike Brown did a, a, a key thing. He he changed himself for our culture, and he and it's hard to change what you've known. You know, he's came from a certain system or culture, and it's a little bit more loose here, and it kind of drove him crazy sometimes. And it's like this is crazy, but he figured that out. He says I want to embrace it, and I feel like Draymond Green and myself were like. We're going to show you, we're going to help you along the way. But whatever you need us to do, we got you. And he did a hell of a job. He did a hell of a job. And, and that's hard to do when, you know, he's been to the finals doing it his way. So he knows how to have some success. But he embraced our culture. And uh, I'm so happy for him. Thank you, Andre.